Welcome to the Ordinary Guy Garage. I'm Scott, Ordinary Guy, and today we're gonna work on the S10, so hang tight. Well, I'm making really good progress on the S10 here with the wiring. I'm kind of at a standstill. I got uh, I got some of the relays in and I'm just beginning the wiring on that um, or the mapping out of it. It's gonna all get rewired. Um, the dashboard is completely out um, and I've ripped out a bunch of wires. I'm making a panel that goes in the middle to hold some of the electronic stuff. Um, and as far as that goes, I got this, the gauge cluster about done. So far, this is what I've pulled out of it wiring wise. So it was a little bit of a mess, but I'm waiting on stuff for it, waiting on some more wiring to come in that I ordered and just some doodads for it. So it's at a standstill right now. This truck here is gonna be happening really, really soon. Um, what we're waiting on to start this one is to finish up this one. Now we got the motor in it, transmission in it. It's all hooked up and just about ready to go. As I said, the Ranger is completely together, almost. We still have to put the transfer case in and the drive shafts and the exhaust, so not completely. Um, but what we ran into was when we bought it, it had um, parts in the back and a wiring harness in the back. And we just assumed that the wiring harness was for that truck, but it's not, it's not for that truck. Um, so we have a 96 Explorer that we've been using or that we used as a donor for the rear end for his S10 and for a motor for this truck. So we thought, well, let's just try that harness. Well, that harness is different. It, it, just a little bit different. It's missing an oxygen sensor. It's uh, the, the alternator hooks up a little bit differently. And so we tried using it and it keeps, it'll pop the alternator fuse as soon as you start to put it in there or the charging fuse, I should say. So I'm gonna have to get another harness for it. So I think I'm gonna, I found one on eBay. I think I'm gonna order up and uh, get that going. So that might just sit there and we may just go ahead and get started on his truck this week. Um, so that's where a little quick update on where we're at with this. Oh, and my Ranger, if anybody is following that, uh, the heads are cracked. So we're trying to find another set of heads for it. Um, I might just go ahead and buy a reman engine. I don't know. Um, but that would be a little bit down the road. So enough with that. That's an update on all the vehicles out here that are currently uh, in the shop. Um, now, so what I'm going to do for the S10, excuse me while I move this, uh, traction last year was an issue for me and, uh, I mean, not a really bad issue, but enough that it was keeping my 60 foots way out of the park. And, uh, well, I mean, one five, five isn't really, really bad, but on a prepped surface, excuse me, um, the cat won't leave me alone when I sit down and <laughs> he has fur all over me. I got to scratch it. So. Anyways, um, oh, and he has this collar we just, I put on him. It is for an invisible fence. My dogs have the collars for invisible fence, keeps them in the yard. And I'm hoping it'll do the same thing for him. He uh, went to the vet this week and had a little bit of a snip snip going on. And between that and the collar, I hope it'll keep him on our property here so he doesn't get run over by a car or eaten by a coyote or something. So anyways, all right, enough about the cat. So what I'm doing, back to what I was saying, the, the S10 had some traction issues. I have those traction bars that I built, the infamous Scott Trax, um, that seem to be working pretty good. Uh, I have an anti-roll bar in it, which keeps it uh, launching straight when, and it does, it needs a little bit of adjustment, you know, cause it was kind of going to the right down the track a little bit. Um, and, but what I had in there was, uh, that fur is really making my nose itch. That what I had, in it was some Summit Racing three-way adjustable shocks. They were the cheapest ones I could get, and I bought those like 10 years ago when I first built the truck, and they worked okay, but I've outgrown those, or the truck's outgrown those. So what I did was I bought QA1 double adjustables. Um, 
Oh, excuse me. I bought two QA1 and double adjustables for the rear. Um, this stuff I bought last year. Um, I, my, uh, I have one inch lowering blocks in it. These are inch and a half lowering blocks, but they're solid. So they're billet, I guess is what you'd call them. Um, and so it'll lower it just a little bit more, but I'm not really looking for that. What I'm looking for is the, the durability of a solid block versus the ones that are kind of hollowed that are in there now. And the other thing is I, I got some of the, uh, some U-bolts for it. I've been using the factory U-bolts for a Ford Explorer in the back of this thing ever since I put that rear end in. So it's time for a little bit of an update. Um, the reason I went with QA1 over Viking was <clears throat> I can call QA1 and order them from QA1. I can call Summit Racing, order them from Summit Racing. If I have an issue, I can send them right back really easily. And from what I've looked for with the Vikings, they're a little bit cheaper, but they don't really sell them in stores. They just have independent dealers all over the place. And, and I've tried to order them a couple of times and it hasn't really been really worked out for me. So I just went with QA ones, big deal. Um, so that's it. So let's get started. All right, well, I got everything apart um, and I just figured I'd do a little bit of comparison and then show where we're at with this. You know, uh, lowering blocks. I had one inch blocks in it and they're the hollow kind. They were the cheap ones that I could get. And you can see they're kind of got a little bit of a, little bit of a shape to them. And then I had to use these uh, shims because I was off on my pinion angle a little bit. Um, I think I was, I, I would, I used to, when I first put the truck together, I would drive to the track cause I didn't have a trailer. So, and I'd get a little bit of vibration, but it seemed to work fine at the track. So, um, anyways, I had put these in there and you could actually see, oh, the kitty's in my lap again. You can actually see inside of these, it's kind of like, uh, mushroomed in, I guess, where it, uh, where the uh, the pad on the rear end has been going into it. You can see the little thing is, is uh, off and they're, they're two different sizes. This one actually came apart on me. I took the truck in for an alignment and uh, that thing there was, was, was uh, off and it was down inside of here and the rear end was out a little bit. <laughs> no wonder it needed alignment. So anyways, I used that. Those were those and so that's why I'm upgrading to these. These are solid, a little heavier duty. These are an inch and a half, so, and these are one inch. So, you know, I got a little bit more. Um, and I kind of would like the ride height to be just a little bit lower anyways. So we're gonna get the rear end set up and then I'll, I'll set the front end. So that's, that's those. Now these, my U-bolts that I've been using, these are the, uh, out of a Ford Explorer. Pulled these when I pulled the rear end out of it out of the Explorer. So, and then I'm gonna upgrade to these here, which is a little bit, little bit better. You know, you can see they are a little more heavy duty. Um, and the other thing, we already kind of went over the shocks a little bit, I guess, but these are the Summit shocks that I bought. These were like 20 bucks a piece or 30 bucks a piece. And they, they worked, they worked until I started adding power to it, but they worked pretty good um for quite a while for quite a few years so and then of course the the qa ones are the ones that i'm going gonna go to now so um now the point the point of all of this is a lot of times you read the internet you read forums you read all this stuff and people say you can't do this you have to do that you and you know what you know you don't have to buy a brand. You don't have to do any of this. This is, this is, this is hot rodding here, you know, uh, making do with what you got, you know, don't not take your car out or don't not put your car together or truck together or whatever, because you don't have the right package of parts, make do with what you got. You know, that's how this truck came together. And it's been years. I mean, 10 years ago, I built this. So everything, it just got me there, you know, and then, I just started upgrading as I needed it. The rear end, uh, and this is this is one of the reasons I was having such uh, 
having issues with my 60 foot last year was the rear end was just soft. You know, it, it wasn't doing everything it was supposed to do. And things like, like, you know, uh, blocks and U-bolts, crappy shocks on down the line, these things needed to be upgraded. So I've learned a lot off of this truck. So when we get into the project with Bean's truck, the red S10, um, I've learned a lot from this. So we can really get in there. It should go pretty quick and we should be able to do it for hopefully fairly cheap. So anyways, I'm gonna start putting this stuff back together. Alrighty, all back together now. Got the new blocks in, new U-bolts through there. Got the uh, double adjustables on there. One thing to note, I had just regular uh, um, studs here for regular, you know, for the um, shocks that were on here and they were too big. So I put them on the lathe and cut them down a little bit. The, the stud there to, so that way it'd fit. I mean, you could just put a bolt in there and you'd be all right, but I wanted to do it that way, so I did. But that should get me going pretty good. You can see I got the anti roll bar. Sorry about that. Anti roll bar up there, connected in. Everything's there. Hey, kitty. Um, that's about it. All righty. Got her back down on the ground. I like the way that sits in the back there. It's got good, it's got good, mostly even uh, tire to wheel well spacing on it. Looks good, I like that, I like that height. Just enough room in there. Um, the front, still another story. We still gotta work on that. Um, just a couple of quick measurements. Uh, the right here in front, the body right here, is 12 and a half inches, you know, between the ground clearance. And then over here in the front is 13 inches. So it sits a little bit higher in front. It looks like it sits a lot more because of the way the fenders are shaped and all that. But uh, I still got to do something about that. I'd like it to come down probably like two inches, inch and a half to two inches. So we'll, we'll work on that. There it is, piece by piece we'll get there. Uh, like I said, you know, when I first put this truck together, I went cheap route just to basic bare bones to get me down to the track and I've slowly started upgrading over the years. It was not last year, I think it was the year before that I went through the rear end again and did a spool in it and I did the nine inch ends and I bought 35 spline axles and did the anti-roll bar and you know, it just, as the trucks needed it, I've, I've done it. So these were things that needed, so it's done. I do need to put a, a one of those um, girdle cover things on the rear end, the one that kind of strengthens up the caps and all that, you know, the, the cast aluminum thing with the adjusting bolts in it. You can kind of set a preload on them. I need to do that still, but for right now I'm good. 
Uh, I'm still waiting on more wiring stuff. I got a little bit of stuff in today, but you know, uh, when you order stuff from Amazon, you know, one box comes here, one comes from there, and sometimes they come from Amazon, sometimes they're drop shipped. So a uh, couple more days and, and that'll be done. So I, I might mess with the front end. I'm not sure, but anyways, enough of the rambling on. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any ideas, uh, shoot them at me and I, I'd appreciate it. So uh, <laughs> this cat is crazy, I tell you. All right, I'll see you next time.